Hello Tale Tellers, welcome to the second lesson today actually for the ABRSM Grade 1 Cello Choices, okay? So we're going to, I'm going to give lessons on all of the pieces anyway so you can pick and choose and see which one you prefer. Do you know what? Sometimes I think it's a good idea not just to listen to them all but to actually play at least the first sort of line but you can play all the way through and just think to yourself am I going to be able to really enjoy this piece of music? Is it me? Does it reflect me as an artist, as a, as a musician? Um, now, we've just played the, um, the arbo, and that's uh, completely different to this piece. It's still in first position, of course, and we have a couple of slurs um, or string... I, no, I don't think there were any slurs in the other one. There were string crossings. Um, and there are string crossings here too. Our string crossings here are very slurry. The whole thing is legato. That means really smooth, like water, like wind and water, gentle wind and water. You know, there is nothing aggressive about this piece. Um, it is. It does start quite loudly though, um, but it's not aggressive. I, I think when you're playing this, I always recommend that you mime the piece as we play it through. We're going to play... We're just going to play the first two lines. And I I always think miming is a really good way of understanding how you need to play it because then you can hear the, the musician, you see, and and uh, the piano, and you can sort of think to yourself, oh, that I see, I've got to be really slurry, for want of a, a better word. I mean, slurry kind of works, doesn't it, for us? Um, it's not particularly slow. Um, Thomas Campion... Uh, is the composer we've got a legato we've got an f sharp that's okay we've been doing a lot of f sharps in our classes we're all in first position and we've really not got too much to worry about in these first two lines the biggest thing is just getting that legato right and the contrast between the mf mezzo forte on the uh, the first four bars and then um and the next uh, five, six, seven, eight are all piano, so quiet. So that contrast is going to get you brownie points. Well, more than brownie points, exam points. Okay, so let's let's just play it. I've slowed it down a bit. Let's play it and mime it. Just mime it if you can. <laughs> It's very pretty. Um, I, it's, it's a little bit faster than that. We'll do that in a minute. Um, so I recommend you mime. If you want to see my annotated score, you'll need to pop along to my Facebook page. With Tale Teller Kids has a Facebook page, and you can you can get catch up with all our stories there as well, actually. But you can catch up with all the sheet music. And what I'll do is I'll make an album, especially for all the Grade One piano, and then. Uh, or the grade one cello because we do uh, at Tell Tell Club we do piano as well and we do jazz too actually so um, I will get, try and write all the instructions out so you don't even have to listen to these podcasts you're more than welcome to pop along to my Facebook page our Facebook page um, Tell Tell Kids and just see what you know what the score is literally okay so let's have a little look Let's get that, find that, uh, that G. It's starting um, in G mate. Well, I'm pretty sure it doesn't change, but I can't see the full score. Um, so we're, I mean, this, the annoying thing actually about um, working on a computer, a laptop, is that you can't usually see the full score. And certainly, because I wear glasses, if I put a score to a page, I can't see it. So I always recommend that you that you buy the um, the ABRSM sheet music and have that in front of you, the paper copy. Um, you know, you'll probably be using that in the exam. So let's find that G. And then there's a string crossing. 
and a lovely, um, I mean, I'd say down with the G and then up with the B and the A. Now, how do you make that smooth? Well, you, no pressure on these notes. We want... very different to the last piece where we were sort of pushing in and it was a bit more bassy and funky this really f just feel that flow and it it comes from you're really playing from your back not your not your not your wrist that would be wrist and that's back it's very different listen Listen and and you'll hear um, that what the uh, performers are doing is all over the internet. You can find these and you can watch them, watch the performers, see where their energy is coming from. Uh, hopefully, you've got your feet on the floor. Right, let's uh, let's move on. <laughs> much like water as you possibly can just keep that bow really steady you know uh, it's very very pretty piece actually now let's look at five now it, your volume four about there so that your volume for the next bar five Um, now, a couple of tips. When you're playing louder, I mean, it's probably a bit too loud. When you're playing louder, play a little bit nearer the bridge. Don't go too far down because you won't be able to get back up again. And when you play quieter, get a little, come a little bit higher. Now, the reason that um, that helps your volume, apart from sort of uh, putting more weight on the bow, is... The nearer you are to your, um, you see these holes, the F holes in the, in the cello. The nearer you are to those in the bridge, the more voluminous the sound is. It, the more uh, grand and, you know, it's playing around with those rather gorgeous acoustics. So if you're higher up, if you look now, if you're higher up, you see, you're not near those holes or the bridge. Just try that. Don't go too near the bridge. That's about an, an inch and a half from the bridge. Much easier up this end, isn't it? To be quiet. Okay? So that's that's a little tip there. So, let's play with the accompanist. Nice and slowly. Keep it steady. And above all, Enjoy it because the examiner is going to be looking for performers who are enjoying themselves. Let's do it. <laughs> Is your introduction to this rather lovely piece. Let's pop it just before we go, because we can, on the 96 BPM speed. This is the speed um, that the examiner will want you to be playing it at. And don't be put off by it, it's a little bit quicker. <coughs> The, what you need to work on are the string crossings. That's the least, um, or the, the most worrying bit. 
because you've got um, a lot to think about. You've got this legato, but the legato, those uh, slurs are on the same string, so not too much to worry about there. But it is these, um, you know, after this, you've got a string crossing. And that's, you need to bear that in mind. So really, I recommend that, you see bar, uh, where's our, where are our string crossing? Let me look. There. Uh, but bar two, string crossing. Do, do that. Over and over again. And don't, when you're doing that, don't press with the back of your um, hand, with your thumb. Don't squeeze. No squeezing. Remember our little exercise. These are my fingers on my fingerboard. They're so strong. But no thumb at the back. You don't need it. You don't need it. Your, your fingers are, are incredibly powerful. And we utilise that. Cellists use that facility, that power, that energy that, that they automatically have they just don't know they've got it sometimes okay that's i think that's it i think that's it for today um if, which do you prefer do you like this one or do you like the um arbor i don't know they're very different very different now tomorrow i'm going to do two more um and we'll also be working on the second sections of these pieces okay in fact i might do another one now uh, maybe i'll do the a, a third choice today Let's see. Let's see how it goes. Maybe I'll read a story. Um, Okay. I hope you enjoyed that, guys. And remember, all my classes are free and everyone is most welcome.